Woe to you of earth and sea. Welcome to Satan is My Superhero, a show about art, culture, history, and the devil. I'm your host, Judas Falling. In this episode, we will investigate the Freemasons, finally, once and for all, opening the book on their satanic ways. And you always thought they were just a bunch of boring old men playing dress-up, performing archaic rituals, and getting drunk. As far as anyone can tell, the Freemason movement can trace its roots back maybe as far as the 14th century. There are an estimated 6 million Freemasons in the world, so just be careful, all right? They could be anywhere. First thing to look for when identifying Masons is that they will almost certainly be a man. Oh, it's a sausage fest, no doubt about it. There have been many attempts to bring women into the Brotherhood, going back as far as the 19th century with very limited success. The Masons do have female and mixed-gender affiliated organisations. There are also some women-only Masonic lodges, but they are not recognised as a legitimate part of Masonry. And before you ask, they do have a transgender policy. This declaration was made by the United Grand Lodge of England in 2018. Should a person who has undergone gender reassignment and has become a man apply to become a Freemason, then his application must be processed in the same way as for any other male candidate. You'll be pleased to know it works the other way too. If that's the right way of saying it. Who knows, these days you've probably just said the most offensive thing ever. A Freemason who after initiation ceases to be a man does not cease to be a Freemason. So the gist of it is, as long as you identify as a man on the day you become a Mason, they don't care what genitals you may have been born with or what gender you may choose later. They're very progressive. Just no girls allowed, that's all. Jono, I've got wonderful news. Words come down from the top. Women are finally allowed to join. About bloody time. Are there any women who want to join? Probably not, but it's up to us to change that. We need to come up with a campaign to encourage women to join this lodge. We could run a sewing class on Tuesday mornings while the kids are at school. We could get some of those magazines you see at the doctor's office and spread them around. Cooking! Cooking! We should do something with cooking. How about a monthly general house maintenance workshop? Just the easy stuff, like changing light bulbs. Stop, Jono! Stop! Stop what you're saying! Just stop it right there! Let me get a pen! To be a mason, it doesn't matter what religion you follow, as long as you believe in a supreme deity. They refer to the supreme deity as the great architect of the universe. This inspires anger in religious circles and has seen the Masons accused of being deists, atheists and Satanists for as long as they've existed. In 1698, a Presbyterian minister printed a pamphlet condemning Masonry with the line, They are the Antichrist, which was come leading men from fear of God. For how should man meet in secret places and with secret signs, taking care that none observe them doing the work of God? Are not these the ways of evil doers? In 1738, Pope Clement XII discouraged Catholics from joining Masonry. He felt if they weren't up to no good, why was it all such a secret? He's got a point. And the Vatican's opinion, if anything, has only hardened against the Masons since 1738. In 1884, Pope Leo XIII said, The partisans of evil seem to be combining together and to be struggling with united vehemence, led on or assisted by that strongly organised and widespread association called the Freemasons. Many of the Christian churches share Rome's opinion, the common line being masonry is not compatible with Christianity. Same can be said for many in Islam, who also see it as promoting Zionism. The website Mission Islam claims Freemasons worship Dahal, the Muslim equivalent of the Antichrist, if you like, and every position at the UN and in the British government is occupied by a Freemason. Who are you voting for this year, Grandma? It doesn't matter. They're all Freemasons anyway. All of them? What about the female candidates? Sex change operations. It's actually why the technology was invented at all. Really? Yes, so Winston Churchill could become Margaret Thatcher. A professional prankster going by the pen name Leo Taxel wrote a number of books in the 19th century detailing fake eyewitness accounts of devil worshipping within Masonic lodges. Then after a dozen years of successfully libeling the Masons with bizarre stories of supernatural occurrences, he publicly announced it had all been a hoax. He said this of his time writing those books. The crimes that I laid at their door were so grotesque, so impossible, 
So widely exaggerated, I thought everybody would see the joke and give me credit for originating a new line of humour. He also went on to say, I sometimes said to myself, hold on, you're going too far. (laughs) But I didn't. My readers even took kindly to the yarn of the devil, who, in order to marry a mason, transformed himself into a crocodile. And despite the masquerade, played the piano wonderfully well. But my favourite quote from the mad, devilish genius that was Taxel is this one. There is no limit to human stupidity. To prove Taxel's point, he is still quoted and referenced by anti-Mason conspiracy theorists to this day. Did you know the Mason scriptures were originally written on a naked woman's back by the tail of a demon snake? That doesn't make any sense at all, does it? Oh, right. A demon snake? Too hard for you to believe? No, the part I can't believe is the naked woman. How did she get into the lodge? Now, to be fair, the Masons have never done themselves any favours on the antagonising religious fervour front. They do have a bunch of very religious-like practices. They openly praise a supreme deity not specifically named in anyone else's text. Yeah, that's problematic. They have doctrine, scripture, iconography, symbolism and rituals that go back hundreds of years. No matter what the fact is, they do look a lot like a religion. And the church has already got enough competition in a crowded marketplace. Take, for example, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, an occultist organisation dedicated to the research and practice of mysticism. That's just more competition for the church. Oh, and did I mention, founded by three Masons. Not helping. The Illuminati was founded by a Freemason. Oh, seriously? Masonry doesn't just upset religious folk. It has also been the concern of the political sphere for as long as it's existed. As early as 1786, a book called Disclosure of the System of Cosmopolitan Politics was accusing the Masons of plotting worldwide revolution. In 1797, a Jesuit priest in France published memoirs illustrating the history of Jacobism, claiming the French Revolution was the result of a Mason plot to undermine the Catholic Church. The involvement on both sides of the revolution by Masons is undeniable. Whether they were all working together as Freemasons is another question. Philippe Egalité, you have been found guilty of crimes against the peoples of France and will be put to death for those crimes. Do you have any last words? Yes. As a Freemason, I must protest at the name of this murder machine. Really? Dr. Guillotine did not invent this machine. It was designed by Tobias Schmidt and Anton Louis. And they are not Masons. Brother Guillotine is opposed to the death penalty, actually. Scrab, please take care to note Philippe's final words. I've been needing them at my next pub trivia night. Executioner, proceed. Many of America's founding fathers and the first handful of presidents were Masons. Masonry was so prevalent in early American politics that by the 1820s there was an anti-Masonic party. Where have you been? Anti-Masonic party? Oh, not what you were expecting? No one was even dancing. In 1826, a man by the name of William Morgan, who was on the verge of publishing a book revealing Mason secrets, was kidnapped and presumably murdered. Four Freemasons, including the local sheriff, served prison time for the kidnapping. Canny politicians seized on the story of murder and conspiracy and the anti-Masonic party was born. Mr Southwick, do you not think a major political party dedicated to just one singular goal is far too narrow in vision to properly govern an entire nation? Great question, and I'm very glad you asked it. My answer to that is, Freemasons smell like farts. Uh, right. So how would you describe your party's economic plan? Sure, I think I can best describe it as uh, Freemasons smell like farts. Right. Uh, what about your infrastructure plan? We're very proud of this one. It goes, <clears throat> Freemasons smell like farts. Should I even bother asking you about your foreign policy? How about this? It starts with Freemasons and ends with... Smell like farts? You know it. So you really have no meaningful policies? You are starting to sound like a Freemason, and you know what that means? No. You smell like farts! Burn! Oh, so hot, I'm on fire, baby. In 1903, The Protocols of the Elders of Zion was published in Russia. 
This document claimed the Jews had infiltrated Freemasonry and were using it to further their ambitions for world domination. The document was translated and republished all over the world. Freemason Henry Ford had 500,000 copies printed and distributed in America. Nazi sympathizer Admiral Sir Barry Edward Domville wrote a book called The Great Taboo, Freemasonry. Domville also believed there was a Jewish conspiracy to rule the world. He said, Masonry is the executive partner for the conduct of Jewish policy. Oh, what an original thinker. After Franco came to power in Spain, a list of 80,000 suspected Masons was drawn up by two Catholic priests. Death squads were then sent out into the countryside murdering these alleged Masons. Franco himself said, The whole secret of the campaigns unleashed against Spain can be explained in two words, Masonry and Communism. In Mein Kampf, Hitler wrote, the general pacifistic paralysis of the national instinct of self-preservation begun by Freemasonry. It's estimated as many as 200,000 Masons died in Hitler's concentration camps. Hamas also believes Masonry is a Zionist movement. Under Saddam Hussein's regime, the penalty for being a Freemason was death. So why is it, if you're a leader of a totalitarian regime, the first thing you must do is put down Masonry? Once again, the Masons do not help themselves on this front. They do show up in a lot of world-changing political revolutions. Washington, Lafayette, Ataturk and Bolivar were all Masons, just to name a very, very, very few. But I argue you could define any grouping of people and find them all the way through those same revolutions. For example, let's look at the Declaration of Independence. I don't think it's controversial to call it a revolutionary document signed by a bunch of revolutionaries. Of the 56 gentlemen who signed the document, it's generally accepted eight of them were Masons. 24 of them were lawyers. That explains a lot, actually. Why is the American Revolution not considered a lawyer conspiracy? Eight of the signers weren't even born in what would become America. You could blame the whole thing on immigrants if you wanted to. That's it, boys. Dump the tea. No more taxation without representation. America for the Americans! Yes, America for the Americans. And those of us who'd only just recently moved here. Yeah, America for the Americans and those of us who just recently... Wait, what? How recently? I don't know. What's the cutoff? Like, how long do I have to have been here to begin? Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on hot dogs? I love them. All right, cool. Let's do this thing. Of course, it goes without saying, wherever religion and politics feel threatened, conspiracy theories are sure to follow. Freemasons have been implicated in the assassination of JFK. It doesn't help that Abraham Zapruder, the only person to film the actual killing in the famous Zapruder film, was a Freemason. Ooh, not good. James Shelby Downard authored King Kill, 33 Degrees, Masonic Symbolism in the Assassination of John F. Kennedy. It is a fascinating insight into the human imagination where bat poop crazy Downard makes all sorts of connections to Mason symbolism with street names, people's names, dates and map coordinates related to the assassination. You want some examples of pattern recognition set to overdrive? The famous Texas School Book Depository had been known locally as the Sexton Building for some time before the assassination. Down it asserts the Sexton Beetle buries dead mice and birds with its eggs. So, you know. No. No, we don't. Tell us, Downard. Tell us, damn it. I'll give you one more Downard banger. Lee Harvey Oswald, murdered by Jack Ruby. Oswald, Wizard of Oz, Jack Ruby, Ruby Slippers, you do the math. I'm trying, but I'm coming up with nothing. This damn calculator doesn't even have a ruby slippers button. I've been pushing the red one. I know what you're thinking. Why would the Masons assassinate a president and hide clues about it in Hollywood films? Well, here is what Downard said. The placing of the Freemasons on the moon could occur only after the killing of the king. Game over, Freemasons. We know you did it, and now we know why. Let's go, boys! I'm going to take a short break from the show right now to talk about my sponsors and Patreon. I don't currently have sponsors or Patreon, but if you'd like to support the show, you can do that by buying my novel. It's called Chaos Machine by Judas Falling. It's available through Amazon. You don't need a Kindle to read it. Almost any digital device will do. 
Don't forget, Chaos Machine by Judas Falling. Now, back to the show. Well-known conspiracy theorist Milton William Cooper claimed the Masons created NASA just to trick the world into believing space travel was possible. Then, with the help of Disney, NASA filmed the moon landing in a studio. Sorry, Neil. We're going to have to take that one again. The line is meant to go, that's one small step for a man. I don't want to climb up that ladder again. It's really hot in this ridiculous suit. Yeah, but you know, this is kind of the money shot. Like, this is the shot that we need to get right. Think about it, Neil. This is the shot that will inspire generations. Inspire them to dream. To look up into our computer-generated holograph sky and dream. Let's run it one more time. Let's do it for the children. Let's do it for the future, Neil. Can't we just fix it in post? Oh yeah, of course we can. That's lunch! Wait a minute, I thought they shot Kennedy so they could go to the moon. Now they never went? Oh man, my conspiracy theories are contradicting each other. Cooper was also into UFOs, so his cognitive dissonance was working just fine. He believes aliens crashed at Roswell. They got lost on their way home from Uranus. Man never walked on the moon. They filmed it. Speaking of cognitive dissonance, some flat earthers have claimed Freemasons benefit from promoting the insane idea that the Earth is a globe. So you believe the Earth is flat, right? It's obvious. Just look around. Um, yeah. Okay, explain to me then how everyone in Australia hasn't just fallen off. Gravity? Gravity. Another elitist conspiracy to protect Newton's reputation and the Enlightenment. Why do they want to protect Newton's reputation? He was a Freemason. Was he? Probably. Why else would they tell us the world was round? In the 80s, prominent anti-Mormon activist J. Edward Decker published a pamphlet claiming the street plan of Washington, D.C. was set out to represent Masonic and or Satanic symbols. When you look at the map, you can definitely find an upside-down pentagram. You can also make out squares, triangles, pretty much any geometric shape you like. It is a grid pattern. Decker said, The satanic pentagram under which the White House sits is an open door through which Satan has access to the White House. Or I could just get an Uber. I could talk about Freemason conspiracies for the rest of the day. From Jack the Ripper to 9-11, the Masons have been accused of everything. But we do have to wrap this up somewhere. I really came into this episode with the mindset Freemasons were a bunch of boring old men. Boy, was I wrong. And now I'm thinking about the memories I have of them from my childhood. I saw them around my community, helping people and stuff. They just looked like a bunch of boring old men to me. But is that exactly what they wanted me to think? I mean, it's pretty obvious they killed Kennedy. Just cover the screen with a Dallas street map while you watch Wizard of Oz. You'll think you're in a Dan Brown novel. And then don't be embarrassed to ask for help. Anywho, the final word on the Masons goes to YouTuber Taylor Marshall. In his 2019 book, Infiltration, The Plot to Destroy the Church from Within, he says this of what he describes as occult Freemasonry and its belief in alchemy. This is the heresy of naturalism. Manipulating nature to produce something above nature, just as Satan attempted to transcend his nature in order to become God. Who doesn't want to be God? And that's why Satan is my superhero. If you've enjoyed this episode, please rate, review, subscribe, you know the drill. But more importantly, please recommend this show to just one person. I mean literally one person. Choose that person well. This is it, Jono. You've made it, mate. You're about to be initiated at the highest level. Anything you want to say? No, let's get on with it. I need to know. I need to know the final secret. It's all about Satan, isn't it? It it is, isn't it? It's Satan. Tell me it's Satan. No, it's just an excuse to get away from the wife.